Welcome back to the LCS Countdown. Now, 100 Thieves, they look a little different uh, from when we saw them during the lock-in playoffs. So, Raz, I want your thoughts right off the top. What do 100 Thieves need to do, or change, rather, uh, to return to that kind of dominance that we once knew them for? Yeah, I'm concerned, because when I saw them during the regular season, I thought their fundamentals in the first you know, few minutes of the game were good. But when they went up against Cloud9, I don't know if it was overthinking, but Rift Turtles were being dropped. That was my issue. Um, I'm okay if you decide as a team to give Rift Herald for a play across the map, but in this, like multiple times, they didn't have a trade. Uh, so out of the six Rift Heralds, they only got one. And out of all of them, they only really had a proper trade for one. And even in that trade, I appreciated Cloud9 getting more gold onto Sven instead. So for me, there was just a lot of issues that I had. They, they were addressing by the end game. They definitely need to improve upon that when they go up against Dignitas tonight. Yeah, well, okay, so this is a bit of a conundrum to me, Mark, uh, just because when we talked about 100 Thieves coming into the split, so much of the conversation was about these pieces that are being added to the roster mm -hmm. alongside someday. All of them, great individual players. Yeah, for the most part, I think everyone on 100 Thieves is pretty good, but they're definitely one of the teams that, over the course of the split from the dominant lock-in towards the later portions, felt like they became less than the sum of their parts in a lot of ways. There's just a lot of coordination issues when you watch this team play. In team fights, they're not always focusing down the same targets. They're, they're kind of going in at different times, at different points. Uh, and they've, they've really struggled in 5v5 situations, uh, most critically in, in the last game, uh, not only were they getting flanks, but when they had their opportunity for flanks, you see Someday here come over the wall as everyone's kind of kiting out. They're not on a target. He sends out a max range W and Q before kind of bailing on it, and just the entire team then runs over an Oriana ball and gets uh, a huge shockwave. So these are kind of the team fight issues that they have, and then they're also struggling a little bit in the early game against TL in the last week of the regular season. You saw Closer get collapsed on when he was trying to trade map uh, against TL gave up a death. Same thing kind of happened, a little bit different of a situation, but a similar issue happened against the C9 in their series, where again, Closer was caught out in the grump by a collapsing bot lane. And there's just not enough communication, it feels like, when people leave lanes, when people can roam up on the top side, they just use their TP. The enemy mid laner still has theirs, and they, they go for another play into a big minion wave and give up a one for one. And so a lot of their plays struggle to really find clean execution currently. But on an individual level, it's like, okay, well, they're still winning some lane phases. They're still making good individual plays. But once they all start coming together, that's when the mistakes start happening. I had a different gripe with 100 Thieves, and luckily it can be fixed a little bit more easily. And it comes with the champion select. When you're up against Team Liquid or Cloud9, you're probably going to get outskilled. But you cannot also be predictable. So in their efforts to fit Ryoma into the team, I think they've gone back to a much more predictable kind of playstyle with their champions, especially the control mages in the mid lane. And so it's so much easier for the enemy team to exploit them. And if you already have a skill disadvantage, no way you're going to win. There's a lot of very exciting champions that are being played right now across the globe. I want to see 100 Thieves play more into that and throw curveballs at their opponents if they don't think they're going to hold themselves evenly as a team or individually. And here again, Against Dignitas, they have to do that because Dignitas definitely has a much more varied champion pool. Yeah, a, a struggle that they had going up against Cloud9 and against a lot of teams is just uh, flexibility in terms of champion in uh, in the pick band. Uh, when they went up against Cloud9, they had to deal with a Renekton blue side that can go mid or top. But when they had the option, they could only really put it on someday. And that's one of the many things that they ha they struggle with. Um, because, you know, bringing in a new mid laner really in on, late on the split means that they are kind of really late to being able to address that. So it's one of the many struggles, and I hope that the week, you know, gave them that time. Okay, hang on, guys. Hang on. I'm getting some word that we're having some kind of weird interference coming into the studio. I'm not I'm not really sure exactly what it, it sounds like. What? It sounds like Mo. Who's that, Mo? Testing, testing. Hopefully this is clear audio. <clears throat> so I heard you guys were losing faith in 100 Thieves, and I'm going to say this even as a member of the team. Understandable. I watched the games just like you guys did, so I understand why you guys don't believe in 100 Thieves that much. But let's be completely real here. We're facing Dignitas. You know, this is a team that should be at the bottom of the barrel with CLG. I don't know how they're this high in the standings. I don't know how they pulled out this many wins, but they did. And honestly, it's a blessing for us because we should be able to get a free win. I talked to Closer this weekend, and he personally reassured me that there's a 0% chance we're going to lose to Dignitas. Whether it's Ryoma, whether it's Demonte, you can even put me in the mid lane and would we'll still beat them. But either way, it's going to be an easy, quick 3-0, and it's going to be a banger of a series. Mo out. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, all right. Thank, thank you for that deep analysis, Mo. Uh, for those of you at home, be sure to check out Yasuo's co-streams and content over at twitch.tv slash Yasuo. That's Yasuo with two S's. 
you too can ride the 100 Thieves hype train. But, you know, actually, he did say something in there that, uh, that caught my attention, and I do think it's particularly relevant. This idea that Dignitas was so incredibly underrated coming into the season and that the expectation was that they wouldn't even be in our postseason picture. So, uh, Raz, let's, let's talk about that for a bit because I, I think that that should be noted once again. Yeah, like... I wasn't out there putting out my list on broadcast or anything, and I had the struggle of where did I want to place oh, Dignitas no. between 9th and 10th. I was an offender as well. They just smashed our predictions. Big uh, is ale. Yeah, everyone in champ, he knew it. Every <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 8th instead of 5th, uh, you know. Uh, it was definitely a case where everyone just underrated this team and continued to underrate them over the course of the season, just waiting for the other foot to drop. Yeah. I mean, and here they are. Again, they've surprised so many to get to where they are. And I think, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, I want to talk about where their strengths lie, uh, Mark. Once again, you know, maybe conversely uh, to uh, 200 Thieves, you see that Dignitas feels like it's, uh, you know, uh, a sum greater than, than their individual pieces. And so much of it is spotlit by a few specific members, uh, you know, particularly the ones that left 100 Thieves. Yeah, I think this is the really interesting part of this Dignitas lineup in a lot of ways is it has a lot of players that were on 100 Thieves not too long ago. And I mean, I understand why people underrate them and myself included. Uh, you know, Sligo and, and Fake God looked pretty bad at points on their 100 Thieves stint. Uh, you know, Sligo actually got benched so that they could bring in uh, Rio back in mid and they had to put Fake God on top lane who also struggled during that time. Uh, but what's really interesting to me is the fact that going into building this year's roster, 100 Thieves effectively said, hey, we don't believe in you guys that much, so we're actually going to buy out Golden Guardian's old roster and bring them in, and we're going to let you guys go to Dignitas. And so I can't think of any sweeter kind of revenge, probably, for some of these players than to not only shut up all the pundits over the course of the regular season by finishing, finishing fifth, but then to go out and knock 100 Thieves out who didn't really believe in you guys enough to sign you back onto their roster would be the ultimate kind of revenge knockout punch to everyone this split. That would absolutely be sweet. The only thing be sweeter would be winning the entire is split. Uh, but Crumbs, let's talk about some of those particular strengths for Dignitas. Most people pointing to communication, pointing to leadership, and of course, the attention must go to the bot lane when you're talking about those qualities. That's right, the bot lane, but the team as a whole is playing like they're on a different hive mind. This what is a piece hell? of art that I have made. This is how I envision the Dignitas strength. It's all for the team. They're all on the same page and that allows you to make plays that the enemy is just not expecting because every single play in this game is a team play. When you make a play into the bottom and the top side has to be relevant. The mid lane has to have the wave prep. It is all about team games. And so despite Dignitas not having individual players that are incredible compared to say Cloud9 or Team Liquid, their teamwork is what's allowing them to get so many wins. And it's frankly one of the goals that most teams in the world try to have to just be all on the same page. And you actually see this kind of move. Watch Aframu and Neo. This is the game saving play against Flyquist. That yeah. flash with Zaya and Alistair, you cannot communicate that. You cannot spot that. You cannot ping that. You just know it. And that kind of team play is what's going to allow Team Dignitas to be a contender, not just here at playoffs, but even in the summer split. All right, well, let's see. Well, graphic oh, design is my passion, apparently, says Crumbs. Did you make that? <laughs> Who made that? I did. I made that Microsoft Paint, my friend. Microsoft Paint. Oh, oh wow. I can't believe God. it. Only the best tools available to our <laughs> analysts here. All right, let's see where Digging 100 Thieves both stack up in our Samsung SSD Fast 5 leaderboards. Now, just like last week, these leaderboards feature our two teams facing off on the Rift today. It's very interesting to me that both Dardock and Aphromo, who are considered to be the strong points of Dignitas in a lot of ways, are sitting as both the slowest in their categories for their role. And Dardock in particular is interesting because it is expected right now for the jungler to just be power clearer and prioritize themselves over the team. But Dardock, we have heard from many other teams that he takes very unpredictable jungle routes. And so by sacrificing the expected route that he's supposed to take, he can find different avenues to gank an opponent that is expecting him to go and power clear. Now, if it doesn't work, you fall dangerously behind. And so it's up to the enemy team to punish that. But that is why the time is so much slower. He's not playing the game the way that most other junglers are doing it right now.
on top of that fact, this is champ pool, I'd say. Uh, you know, most people are playing really fast clearing junglers. You got Olaf, Udir, Hecarim, Lilia. He's got games on Jarvan. He's got games on Rengar. He's got games on, yep. you know, Kindred. He, he really branched out and went against the meta in a lot of ways to bring his team extra playmaking and tools that people aren't going for. So when you see a slower, uh, you know, clear rate and lower CSD and XP differential, that's a pretty conscious choice that the team has made because Dardock is doing things that other junglers are not. All right, well, if we talk about Dardock, then we also have to talk about his matchup today here against Closer in this series versus 100 Thieves. So, Raz, let's talk jungle, continuing along the line of thinking that both of these guys have established. Pull up the list. Exactly. Like, <laughs> honestly, this is what Dardock has worked for. The entire split just to be, I want to be a fly on the wall of the 100 Thieves planning for this series just to figure out just what do they think Dardock is going to play today. Um... Uh, to me, what defines this series is going to be the jungle. For for 100 Thieves, what their success and their failures, for me, depends on how well Closer is doing in their games. I have faith that FBI and Huhi are going to succeed in lane, regardless of the resources that they get. I just want to be able to see that they play around Closer, because 100, th uh, at least Dignitas, are going to be doing that for Dardoch. Level 1s, no matter who it is, Afro moves cross map, uh, you know, looking to secure that blue. And so that's my concern here today, is that 100 Thieves are going to be falling behind against the hive mind that Crumbs puts it uh, for Dignitas. <laughs> And, I mean, the jungler matchup isn't entirely just closer versus Darduk. You have a new mid laner that doesn't have as much time with the jungler as De uh, Tamante. So the fact that you now have to incorporate the mid laner into your jungle synergy might be a hindrance to 100 Thieves. So it has to be about Ryoma and closer playing against Soligo and Dardoch because the mid realms 2v2 will be incredibly relevant, whether it's diving the top lane, whether it's denying waves and also diving the bottom lane. Mid lane with the jungler has to be a priority for both these matches. We've seen how often games can be run over if one of these mid laners just happens to be a few seconds behind or doesn't read the correct play and what the jungler is trying to do. Yeah, and, and for me, I'm really interested in this matchup because back in 2020 when I was in Academy, uh, you know, my team went up against uh, Saligo's team in 100 Thieves Academy, and I thought he was one of the strongest mids at the time. In fact, I thought that, uh, you know, he would get that opportunity to rise up because when Ryoma was in that initial position. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity for Saligo, who's been honestly silent in a lot of the fans' ears. Not a lot of people have been singing the praises of Saligo, or at least, like, been really recognizing him, and I think this is going to be the series in which he can do that if he performs. All right, well, if we talk about, you know, mid and jungle, kind of as a duo against mid and jungle, Mark, let's talk about the actual duo lane, the bot lanes between FBI, Huhi, and Aphromu and Neo. This is a really interesting matchup to me because I feel like they can both achieve what they're trying to do and succeed in that way because they're trying to do different things. FBI and Huhi are all about pushing, getting lane advantages, CSD leads, their highest in forward percentage in the league, their highest in goal differential at 15 in the league because they just crush you in lane phase, they take turret plates, and this allows Closer to often go for invades or just stack dragons up. Um, but on the flip side, Afro and Neo are all about playmaking. And so a lot of the times their four percentage isn't that impressive. They're not, you know, crushing you in lane, but they're setting up and coordinating with Dardock really well. And when you're pushed forward all the time, that does often give more opportunities for you to get picked off and killed. So I really see a lot more playmaking out of Afro and Neo. And, you know, Afro's been so good about spoon feeding his lane mates over the course of his career and getting them fed uh, off kills for the team fights that are coming later in the game where Dignitas thrives. That kind of playmaking, I want to see be backed up by the most broken supports we have seen in playoffs. We've got we LEC, go. we've Rail. got LC, Alistar, and Rail. You absolutely have to be playing this. You cannot, do not give me Tom Kench. I am just going to be done if you play Tom Kench. We <laughs> need to see playmaking from the bottom main. More priority on getting these high-value supports early. Sometimes a counter pick is relevant, but if you just get these power picks, the lane phase, whatever. You team fight and you just hard win then. It's very rare that you get to see series like these, right? Where it's going to be the supporting force that, to me, is like the most eye-popping one. Like, uh, the junglers, the supports. Aphromu versus Huhi, I think, you know, in my list for all pro, I would have had them as third and fourth. Uh, fourth and fifth, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, fourth and fifth. With how strong the pool is, that's a large commentary. Because I've seen many people put them at, at third, 
And I would have even like accepted that with how well and consistent they were throughout the entire split. This is for me a chance for them to make their voice clear that, hey, you know, you guys, you guys got to respect us. Like we've been here for a long time. This is a time in which we are showcasing that we're veterans of the league for a reason. Uh, strong shot callers, understanding where they need to be at the right times. Uh, this should be, if there's going to be a player of the series, I think it's going to be between these two players. All right. Well, just uh, just over three minutes till game time. You know what time it is. It's time for some predictions, gentlemen. So I got to get you on record once again down the line, starting with you, Raz. Who takes it and moves on to face TSM? Will it be 100 Thieves? Will it be Dignitas? I have to believe it's 100 Thieves. They have a lot on their plate. But like Mark said earlier, you know, they just have the players. I have faith that they can re rejuvenate, recoup, come back, and just showcase, you know, why they're on this team to begin with. So I think they're going to take it. I think it's going to be a battle. I have it as 3-2. Mark? Damn, I got the same thing. I thought for sure someone, you know, we go with Dignitas here. We'll see what Crumbs does. Uh, but I, I kind of agree with Raz about, like, I think the bot lane, for example, will be in favor of 100 Thieves over the course of the series. And yeah, they'll turn some kills. But I also feel like, you know, we talked a lot about the limitations that 100 Thieves has. I feel like some of those still exist for Dignitas as well. Afro has to be playing those champions that Crumbs kind of highlighted. And anytime that Afro is not on a playmaking champion, the team suffers as a whole so much. And so I, I hope to see 100 Thieves throw some extra bands down there. You know, they can play the Enchanters. I don't think there's any world where you <laughs> have uh, Afro trying to play Enchanters. I mean, he plays them well, but it's just not what Dignitas needs. And so I think um, playing around bot lane will be such a focal point. I, I expect it to go 100 Thieves way. All right, Crumbs. You going to make it spicy? Fools. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. I knew ah. it. Foolish. Foolish. Have <laughs> blasphemy here. Okay, 100 Thieves. If you saw how they played against Cloud9, they're relying on their team fight. Their macro and laning phase was not where they're trying to win. You're playing right into Dignitas' wheelhouse. They have stolen games from their team fighting alone. So I think that 100 Thieves comes into that team fighting phase, that lack of synergy that we saw in the earlier highlights is going to bite them in the ass. I think Dignitas will win this in 3-2, though. I will say this is not the strongest team of a hive mind, but that allows you to at least take a win here over 100 Thieves. Three twos? Dig crumbs. Go ahead, Raz. Oh, yeah, just dig crumbs. Just, okay, okay. That's what it was. No, I mean, three eight. Uh, three twos yeah, across the board. Say, he's got... <laughs> three twos across the board. That speaks to this feeling yeah. like the most competitive of all the series. We'll see if the teams can make it so. With predictions locked in and Mo safely locked out of the LCS studio servers, let's hand it over to Freak and Azale as we head into our series. Playoffs are the matches that matter. I could have played super well in the regular season, but if I don't have that in the playoffs, then it all didn't matter. But a nice big body slam makes it a one for one. Well played from Fake Guy. Against 100 Thieves, the only threat to consider would be their top lane and their bot lane. And now Sunday finds the angle. What a knock up there. An FBI charges in. As long as I match Sunday in the top lane, we'll win from the bot side. Triple kill, make it a quadra. Give him the penta kill. 100 Thieves did 2 of them in the regular season, but it feels like these teams have kind of had a bit of an opposite trajectory. Dignitas have been improving over the split. How close is this going to be? He right back in the front of the fight, but he's drowsy. Afro, especially, has improved a lot, and from my experience, he's been always like a great player. Headbutt to the flash pulverized setup for Afro move. Somehow, Afro was like getting a flash cue into like our Tristana. With a flash pulverized into the headbutt, and they're gonna find the damage. But we can definitely challenge them, and they should have a hard time. Right back in and goodbye. If you see a team fight, should Afro move though. He's toast. And one team outplays everyone on the other team and wins a team fight when it looks like it was lost, and that's the good toss. He is not toast. He is the toaster. FBI is running away for his life. I think we just have better hands than the other team. If they have better hands, I think they should have won with the lead they have. I don't think that is true, and he will see it in this upcoming match. And it's already three kills, 100 Thieves, turn it around! Hello and welcome to the LCS. Oh, this is going to be a whole bunch of fun. 
A best, yeah, we're still laughing at the toaster line. <laughs> I'm so here with David. Up. He is not the toast. He is the toaster. Turley. I am the toaster. Turley. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. The Doug Duo is on the cast. I'm excited, Azale. You are a pleasure to cast with, as always. And Dignitas Line of Thieves is going to be a really exciting best of five, despite the fact that Dignitas had the lower bracket start. And we just saw TSM kind of plow their way through yesterday. I have really big questions on whether or not 100 Thieves are even a match for Dignitas right now. Mm -hmm. and, and the question I think on everyone's mind is, are you getting baited by 100 Thieves results against some of the stronger teams, right? You know, yes, they did get smacked down by C9, but that's Cloud9. Can Dignitas bring the same level of dominance? Can they exploit some of the 100 Thieves mistakes in the same ways? And I think that is really going to be interesting, but it does feel like stylistically, it is a good matchup for Dignitas because 100 Thieves has not really been pushing the pace of the game. They have been content to wait for 5v5s and that feels like Dignitas' strength. That's their bread and butter. They're so well coordinated in those 5v5 team fights where Neo is really shining, where Aphromoo's engages are really taking over. And that's what 100 Thieves has to watch out for. Absolutely. So I'm very curious now if the team fights are going to keep going Dig's way because it has just kept happening. If 100 Thieves can find the explosive starts that they had had with DeMonte because that's just kind of what happened. The man roamed a lot more and yeah, he might have lost his lane pretty steadily. You look at the lane stats, Ryoma is heads and shoulders above him in most pre-15 metrics. But 100 Thieves had more of an identity with the other mm. roster. The idea was, but look, we're going to be more well-rounded with Ryoma. We want to make sure we can hedge more of the bets here, have stronger laning and, and all that. And I can understand that line. But 100 Thieves have not won a single game against any other playoff team with this roster. They are 0 and 6 against any other team in playoffs. Yes, half those against Cloud9. Sure, that makes it a bit tougher. But the point still stands that mm -hmm. the prior roster was four and three against playoff teams, right? Like they actually had been successful before. And that is the question still in my mind is, does this mid lane swap work out in the end? Now, Hecarim though, huge pickup in the jungle. I would argue the strongest jungler in league right now, considering there's only one jungle ban. No surprise they grab it here. Yeah, I would agree. I think the ability to engage, the ability to power farm, it works well in dive compositions. It farms fast early. It really kind of does everything you would want from your jungler. I think 100 Thieves just need someone to step up and be that aggressive presence. You know, that's the main thing that to me, they lost when they went away from DeMonte. So if we could have a really aggressive series here from Closer or from who here, Rayoma can step up and make things happen. They just need a go button. They need more than just who he looking for engages. They need someone to be that really aggressive presence, that proactive presence that has the confidence when they see a fight to go for it. And we'll see if they can find that here today. Dignitas going for a very aggressive bot lane right off the bat, Thrash plus Kalista. And I think it really is pretty bold to pick Kaisa into that with Tom Genge already banned away. There's definitely the potential to bully Kaisa as a marksman down there in the bottom lane, not knowing really for her laning phase. It is much more about the scaling, much more about the team fight. And Dignitas is clearly yep. building towards punishing that bottom side. You have GP top now alongside a super aggressive bot lane 2v2. You can drop the alt on Kai'Sa's head, look for those engages. If they can get some sort of a strong ganking jungler here for Dardoch, that could be very troubling for the 100 Thieves bot lane. Absolutely the case right here. So top lanes are going to be matched up in time. Fake God versus Someday. We've seen it a couple of times, of course, in the regular season, but I'll go out and say, I think Fake God has had a better spring split than Someday has been a stronger performer overall. We got to see Fudge shake up and actually handled Someday very, very well in the Cloud9 series last weekend. Fake God, the next one in line to see this one can come through. And uh, as he said, like I said, look, if I can handle Someday, we will win the game. If, if, mm -hmm. if you know, basically to paraphrase, if it's not top diff, we're winning the series. So I, uh, you know, my eyes are on Fake God on the gangplank here that he can handle Someday up there. And, and it's so interesting because you go back to Fake God's, you know, initial time in the LCS on 100 Thieves. And, and he spoke this year about how he had such an imposter syndrome. You know, Someday was doing things in Academy that he had never done before. You know, he didn't feel that he had earned his spot. He didn't feel that he had deserved his spot. And the growth that we have seen from there to here is incredible. And this could be the culmination of that, the ability to really demonstrate that growth. Volibear coming out here. Uh, this very, very likely going to be going towards Dardoch. Could go Predator, could go PTA. I do think it's a really strong jungler these days. Has a reasonable clear. It's not going to be as fast as, as someone, I think, like the Hecarim. But the early ganking and dueling is much more powerful than that of Hecarim. And post six, you really can threaten dive. So when you talk about a strong ganking jungler already, yep. I am very concerned for that bottom side. 400 Thieves, you lantern in the volley, Ooh. you alt up the tower. Wow. And last pick, Ari. 
really I aggressive here. I absolutely love it. Azale, we were talking before we got on air about like, has Dardox champion pool dried up? Is it going to be the same 11 over and over again? Brings <laughs> out the Volibear, Bear, <laughs> number 12. I love to see it. Uh, this is pre-buff Volibear, Bear, by the way. In the mm -hmm. current live patch, 11.6, um, his, his thunder damage against monsters is functionally uncapped during his normal clear. Everything but small chickens, small wolves, and small krugs hits damage cap. He gained like 2 to 3% win rate in the live patch, which we are not on. So Dardok is in a much weaker Volibear state than you might see over in LEC or elsewhere in the world. All the PvP stuff is the same, right? But his dragon clear, his first clear, those are a bit slower, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the price he's, he's paying here. Meanwhile, yes, obviously Everfrost are going to be a lot of fun to see Soligo go bring out as well. One thing I will mention, though, is a lot of people reference, you know, the E damage, the ability to, like, E smite and whatnot. It's very rare that you actually get a lot of points in E as a jungling volley. You usually max that skill last. So unless you're going to, like, level 16, 17, 18, it's not going to be, you know, such a tremendous difference. So I still think it can be really strong. He's taking uh, the PTA, I do believe. So it should be pretty interesting. Yeah, so, so the note about um, Volibear E, by the way. So so just we'll, we'll, we'll spend time on this one as we're loading into the game. Uh, the damage cap at rank 1 in this patch is 150. The rank mm -hmm. 5 cap will be 750, right? So yep. 600 more damage, 5 times the damage, whatever. Um, against anything sufficiently big, he was hitting the, the functional 750 damage cap even at rank 1 of the ability. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, if, if this was played like on another patch, his E would do 600 more damage to Dragon just from patch note changes. Now, that is one ability on a 40-second cooldown. There's a lot more that happens, but like... You hit the cap regardless, and, and that can be relevant. Yeah, that's absolutely relevant. I obviously misunderstood the change, but uh, we won't have that on this patch, so we'll have to see how he can manage without it. Phase rush here for closer. No big surprise. Three phase rushes, actually, uh, over on the 100 Thieves side. Volley, of course, very reliant on the move speed. It is a pretty binary champion that has to close the gap. You know, running straight at uh, the opposing champions. I'm expecting him to go towards chem tank. It feels like the the, the build that we would likely see uh, in competitive play. You can see a mix up from that. You know, we did see in the LEC even builds like Divine Sunderer. Um, you know, coming out first. You can do yeah. more aggressive looks, but I am expecting to see chem tank. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, honestly. It's just such a very strong item ever since they buffed it to be like really, really inexpensive with, with the full active power. Very, very strong stuff. So, Ryoma and Soligo doing battle in the mid lane. I have to believe Ari was meant as a counter pick. Don't know my mid lane matchups that well, but Soligo wants to play it, so you gotta expect this for gonna be pretty good into Oriana. Mm -hmm. Ryoma on pretty standard team fighting mages, as he has been for pretty much his entire tenure on 100 Thieves, both uh, previous years and this one. Nice couple of hits on uh, mana flow as well as everything else. Stardock going to knock down the red buff. Start his second camp. Closer already partway through. Yep. Going to be working his way down towards the bot side very likely. Uh, and Soligo, I'm expecting him to go towards the Everfrost. It feels like Ari has gotten a lot more popular with the rise of that item, with the popularity growing. Uh, the ability to either lair CC or to set up for your charm you know, does make her more of a reliable champion. You know, one of the big criticisms was always how unreliable it is to actually land that charm. And even if you don't land the root, just the slow from Everfrost can be enough to really ensure that you do hit that. And we'll see if they can find a hook down here. But 100 Thieves will be backing it up. Playing the right amount of safe. Uh, zoning out Afro when he's not about to hit two. Nice. Okay. Good hop away by Sunday. Nice attempt on the barrel chain for Fake God. See what happens to the matchup afterwards. I think they can surmise Hecarim is heading towards top side. And of course, Fake God knows he doesn't have Volibear anywhere nearby. So he's going to play that lane pretty safe soon. As Ryama and Soligo battle back and forth. Most of the mana pool is gone from the Orianna. So pretty soon Ryama cannot fight back as. The wave is still being pushed in. It's still in an awkward spot. Like, this is about a time yeah. where Fate God could be ganked. And if, if Closer went for a very fast path, like, yes, there is a ward, but maybe he would have had a oh. chance to knock down Fate God. Same great charm, good damage. Again, Ryama pretty low on mana. Not going to find that much more to do, but Volibear's nearby and Soligo is 60 health. Be careful. I actually think Dardox pathing is, is really intelligent to go back up towards that top side because he has, you know, push on the bottom side. The Thresh and the Callista can guarantee take that scuttle. So they're going to try to double scuttle by moving him up here. And this also helps the cover from that potential gank coming through. As you were talking about, of course, Closer could have tried to do like a three camp gank and then go top, but uh, that can be fairly risky. And Afro here is just setting up the bottom scuttle. So it should be a double scuttle start here for Dardox. Of course, he <laughs> cleared one camp less, but can sure. be rewarded with uh, with a lot of early gold. 
Yeah, I mean, Dardic had to skip Krugs and Gromp. I mean, those, those are the two of the camps that are most affected by the fact that his E damage is still capped at 150 at rank 1. Uh, and lo and behold, has to dodge the, the healthiest camps. Still, as you mentioned, yep, gets double scuttle, gets the same camp count. But Closer got to get a recall off during the same amount of time. So Closer's back on an inventory, right? He's got boots and a ruby. And Dardoch is hoping something happens in mid. But he's like, all right, we're going to recall. Chickens are coming back up, but Charm, maybe? Good sidestep by Ryoma. Yeah, he's going to stay safe. The Charm lands. Maybe you can go for the follow-up flash stun. But Dardoch just back to farming now. Uh, feels like things going pretty well for Dintas in the early levels. Of course, the gold uh, fairly even here. Uh, but we'll see where Dardoch wants to go on the map, where he really wants to look for the pressure. You know, I am expecting it to be a fairly heavy bot lane focus, but uh, with Dardoch not having gone back to base yet, I don't expect him to be down here uh, really anytime soon. So we'll have to see exactly how these teams do want to play it out, if they're comfortable, you know, sitting back in, in more of a farming pattern, uh, because I yeah. would expect Dignitas to be the ones who really want to play it more aggressive. I think when you're looking at, you know, straight up kind of front to back 5v5, when you're looking at the scaling of a lot of these champions, just easier to execute on the 100 Thieves side when you're comparing like nice Orianna to Ari. Good side steps. Half health on the Ari. Close is coming around as well. Has to flash to get away. Close would have probably just barely gotten in range for the devastating charge. And that is a recall flash forced out of Soligo. Well played by the 100 mm -hmm. Thieves duo. And there's Ryama getting a good mark in the early game. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal because he doesn't actually have teleport, right? So getting pushed back, it looks like he'll lose at least a full wave there in that mid lane. Not sure exactly how many minions were at that tower, but that should even out the farm here as Soligo had been pushing an advantage, had been actually pressuring his opponent in the early lanes. And Dardoch gets his first base off. It's going to be tier two boots. This to me always signifies that you are looking to play more aggressive. Of course, going towards something like a Bombi Cinder is going to be more effective for just sitting back and farming. But the additional move speed is so valuable when you are trying to play, pull off these ganks, when you're trying to uh, have the extra playmaking ability to be aggressive. Looking in at bot lane real quick, a temporary 17 CS lead looks like who he's going to hold the wave. And that means after us to stop his recall, try to get Alistair off it. But ultimately, this is, yep, Neos did the same. Goodbye, Huhi, to get his recall off. Oh, that is huge. That is going to be so much damage. They could kill him almost. Flash forward, auto attack comes in. First blood, beautiful hook by Afro Moo. Yeah, the hook is huge there from Afro, but up on the top side, Fake got in trouble. Oh, that is a level six someday. A flash for Fake Gods. We won't be charged backwards, and it means Fake God can stay alive. But wait! Megan R into the wall. A lot of stuns coming across. Fake God walk back up just to die. No, he just slinks away. Oh, oh he's at 12 HP. Oh, the grass rock barely kept him alive there. When he turned back for the Q, I thought he was maybe going to die to the, the boulder from someday. Uh, does end up being a trade of flashes. Fake God does have the TP, but his wave is in a pretty awkward spot. It looked like it was pushing away from him. And you can't really TP back to that wave unless your jungler is going to be up on the top side because Hecarim could still be there. He doesn't really have eyes on the opponent jungler. Fake God, good initial escape. Barely ends up getting out with his life in the end. But because it was the flash from someday and he did survive, it ends up kind of being all right. Yep. Okay. Well, geez. Um, obviously, flash for flash, yeah, does, does mean a lot here. The nice thing is someday has natural escape, so I feel like he's comfortable. Watch mm -hmm. his first blood again. Yeah, so this is this is just trying to actually freeze the wave, right? They're trying to punish the recall, but Thresh comes back, lands the hook. He is not in the minion wave, so there was the easy path there. The early ignite, the flay comes through. The rend, yep. flash auto coming through as well. Really nicely done here. Afro and Neo creating a lead. Unfortunately for them, the first blood did go to the Thresh, not to the Callista, yeah. where you would have really uh, enjoyed that extra gold going. But they are a couple waves up. There's, of course, additional farm for FBI to grab here. But things going well for Dig on that bottom side. Uh, and because Fake got up on the top side, kind of printing out some free money on the GP, they are up to a 1,000 gold lead and working on this early dragon. And I think there's no chance at a contest. Uh, with Neo already being six, you do not want to try to go over here. Yep, there's the Ren, there's the Smite, there's the Claim. Level six for Dardoch means the Tower Dive is certainly possible. So they go going in, looking for the Charm. He's going to land the first part of it. Kalissa sends an Afro move. Ryoma's got nowhere to go. And the duo lane doing all of the work for Dignitas. Nicely done. And this happened to Ryoma in the Cloud9 series as well. Was getting caught out by some of these roams, not flashing the initial CC that comes out. And the Chain CC is so powerful that if you get hit by the Charm, you're never getting out. The roam comes through, the ulti from Callista results in a kill for that Callista, and more minions lost here for Ryoma. 
So look at the game. 1,300 gold lead to Dignitas plus the Cloud. Drake, 10 CS deficit up in the top side. Fate God is behind with a wave to farm, though. So ultimately, going to be in a pretty neutral spot as the wave goes down bot side. And yeah, I mean, 100 Thieves, they, they put some pressure in mid. Closer had a gank up, to, up towards Mariamo. That, that forced a flash. That was a good play. He went top side as well. Was an auto attack away from killing Fate God. I can't say Closer's not been active. It just sadly hasn't been successful. And pre-6 Hecarim isn't really a powerful ganker. Generally, the yeah. only ganks you can make happen is if someone is overpushed and you can kind of get behind them with your E and your Ghost and maybe make something happen. You know, to be fair, most of the lead is just through Dignitas' lanes. It's not as though yes. Dardoch has been really doing anything uh, you know, sure. too much involved in these ganks, and he hasn't picked up an assist yet. Uh, he has been doing fine. We'll see if they can try to pull off any sort of dives or set up aggressive plays. If so, Ligo gets pressure mid. He can move down towards bot. You can potentially create a four-man play, utilizing the Volibear ultimate to turn off the tower, try to really make something happen, because I do think that they want to continue the pressure on this bottom side, stack up the dragons with the Callista, use that as a point of power, and use that to push yourselves forward in the game towards a potential soul and win condition. Yeah, for sure. We're going to see the next dragon spawn about 13 minutes in, so it wouldn't be the fastest soul, but if you get the first four and you started by 10 minutes, you're still going to get at a, at a reasonably good clip mm -hmm. where you're like, all right, yeah, like Baron is barely on the table. We've got soul, so no problem. So at some point in time, we will have to see 100 Thieves fight back for it. Team that normally prided themselves on repeated dives in the bottom lane and, and really getting pressure down there, obviously, they're playing more for a team fight with the Kaisa pick and mm -hmm. uh, against Callista Thresh. You're not exactly looking to dive those guys. So understandable to not play for lane domination. That's not the chance they picked. And so we'll see what comes out of the mid game then for 100 Thieves because it is another fairly slow early mid game for them. Dignitas waiting around for their dragons we mentioned as well. And we'll see when the next big spike of power comes in. It is a really good position though for Dignitas as about to Meganar out here trying to get Fake God low as Hecarim is moving up. So they want to set up a potential dive. Meganar, Debbie's gonna land as well. Try to juke it, not gonna happen. Fake God goes down. Good setup by Someday. Knocked down by Closer. Nicely done. Dardock was moving up, but it was their jungler there first, and now fighting the mid lane. All right, Flay for Afro turns on Aftershock, but he's gonna get Shock waved and going down as well. FBI gets his first kill of the game, and just like that, 100 Thieves have tied up the scoreboard. Nicely done. Two back to back kills. They're actually gonna go ahead now because they had the rift off the end of this top lane kill. You cannot TP back to defend in time. That tower is gone. 100 Thieves, couple of big plays. Fake God was moving forward because Dardock was moving up, and it was just 100 Thieves that were actually quicker on the play, and then Afro getting caught out mid lane just barely didn't have his flash. It came up right after he died. So 100 Thieves, back-to-back, -back, really nice plays here. You can see a Volibear is moving up, Ari is moving up. I don't think they ever knew Hecarim was in the area, and that's why Fake God steps back up, not realizing it, but Closer arrives. Easy kill for them. And then down here, Puhi and FBI have both moved towards the mid lane. They see Callista bot. They know that they have numbers, and they just immediately go in. And Afro, as you can see on the flash timer in the bottom right, a second or two off of having that. Maybe he could have survived if it was up, but it was not. And 100 Thieves find a great punish off a really nice rogue. Beautiful stuff. So, 700 gold lead now for 100 Thieves. We know the next dragon spawns in 50 seconds. That means, hey, the timer's at a minute. Get your recalls off. Help your support get the ward coverage down. It's time to fight for the next dragon if you're willing to do so. Sometimes you go for the cross map play. You say, we'll take top turret. You can go ahead and take the dragon, but expecting both teams to play around this as Afro mm -hmm. and who he should make their way to the bottom river. I, I am kind of getting a bit concerned about the inability to actually get anything done in the early game here for Dardoch. You know, he's significantly behind in the experience. I'm assuming he's going to hit eight probably off this camp, but still. Uh, Closer has already been nine for a camp or two himself, so he's well over a full level ahead. You know, he has the chem tank completed, and he is more of that team fight jungler. The Volibear is more about the early game, more about, you know, dueling. It's not that he is useless in the 5v5, but uh, this is not what you picked it for. You, you are a slower farmer. You want to be active. You want to be able to find those opportunities to find fights, and they just haven't been able to find anything. Good lantern. Good job being there in time. Afro keeps Neo safe as who he wanted to walk in. The dragon has spawned and Closer has complete control right now. But wait, there's more. There's a fight in the bottom side. FBI still going to get pulled in, going to be hooked as well. Goes to the side, looks for Neo, but he's got a shield bow. No problem there. Who he now left alone. But the quad is coming in as well. Hecarim flies in there and there's no easy way out. Neo going to get shocked. Wave and drop down as well. How about the rest of the team fight though? Pushing back is Soligo. Who he pretty squishy. Fake got stuck in the middle. Will find another kill. And now it could be a chase to Closer. Great flag set one up the oh the hook to get away from the minions what can afro moon not do except lose
news. Dardock flashed away. Royama flashed to safety. What a compelling team fight. Whoa. They got to take the victory, and the Dragon's still up for them. That was insane. Full-on 5v5 brawl breaks out in the bot lane. The slimmest of margins have Dignitas coming out on top. Fake God. He couldn't have had more than 50 HP when he actually survived. An afro flashing around the minions to find the hook there was absolutely enormous for them. The Honda performance play here, let's watch it one more time. Going in with the immediate Callista ultimate. A great ult from FBI to get over to the side to get damage down onto Neo, but Dardock ulting in gets so much out. But as Closer arrives, they're able to kill off Neo here, and we are going to go back to live as it looks like a play's breaking out. Hex flash pulverize, and he wanted to hook back out, but a good sidestep by Huhi after running for his life. He will make it out there. And this is, by the way, Lantern Max Thresh. I don't know if everyone's been tracking that one, but it's becoming more and more the popular Thresh build because it's just so much durability, and you're not there for the damage of the Q&E anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's more about the utility, of course, you know, having cooldown lower on, on some of these spells can be nice, but uh, the additional shielding, as you're saying, very valuable. Uh, also, to keep the Callista safe, to use it aggressively uh, for Dardock. Pretty big there as well, as something could be breaking out here. Ghost in for close. They're going to be landing back to safety, no problem. Sidestepping the Ooh. shot as well. Very no interesting. It's actually Leandri's Ari. I cannot say I expected this at all. You know, so this is much more him saying, okay, I'm just going to be hitting frontline and we're going to play more of a front to back style, right? You know, this is less about that lockup. Everfrost really has made Ari so popular. So I just kind of defaulted to assuming that was going right. to be the build here. But with the Leandries coming through, this is much more about just CCing, you know, peeling for your Callista, everyone hitting frontline, utilizing uh, the GP ultimate to create space, to slow people down, to try to separate the carries from their tanks and really hit frontline. Yep. So it uh, will be interesting to see if they can actually pull that off and make this build more worthwhile. Ooh, nearly the hook on FBI, but careful as who hits the front line, puts the ulti on, Neo keeps stacking up. If that can time out, Ren will just kill the man, but able to walk away. Ryama in a good spot. If there's a chase, he can land a shockwave. Dardot gets 30 gold. Back they go. Harold claimed, no problem there. Gold lead, 1,200, 2-0 two to zero on Dragon. So Dignitas have definitely put themselves in a good spot right now. Mm -hmm. And waiting now for three minutes for the next Dragon to spawn. And it's looking like Fake God, Essence Reaver first here, expecting him to go towards the Shield Bow. Uh, that build is so strong in the side lane. It really does make GP so darn difficult to deal with. The additional sustain, the shielding, uh, allows him to really brawl with even champions like Gnar when they are in Mega. It makes going for those all-ins really, really difficult against him. So uh, it's, it's less burst, of course, than something like a pure damage build, you know, going towards IE and whatnot uh, and some of these lethality style builds, but the skirmishing power of it is so strong that it allows you not only in the 1v1, but in the 3v3s, 4v4s, 5v5s to actually get in the mix and get more damage out than you would otherwise be able to do. All right, here we go. Minions being pushed in through the bottom side. Excited to see how much the damage comes through and what else can be done as items are built up. Someday, now going to be challenging Soligo. Now, the man built some armor, so it's not, you know, properly built to challenge an Ari, and ultimately just going to push the wave in and leave anyway. Soligo gets most of the farm out of the turret. Uses charm for one of them. Nice recall stop there. And out goes Someday. Hey, uh, yeah, easy hop away. Like it's technically crunch in Meganar. <laughs> I'll let you have a pass on this one, free. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful next time, though. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> Do my best quick shot impression. You know, got to memorize all the skills, even though uh, the fans don't have them memorized either. Maybe the, maybe the mains do. Even then, who knows? I feel like a lot of times, even even if a champion is something that you play all the time, you don't yeah. really know the ability names, right? You stop like, reading it, the tooltips. Exactly. It's just, yeah. <laughs> you just it's your, your Q, your E, your W, and your R, and that's about uh -huh. it. Yeah. Unless you're, um, I think. Is French a Zerti, I think? So then it's it's A Z E N R. So uh, you know, various languages have different keyboard setups. Important, oh, thank you. Okay, yep, Shockwave back on a Dardock. Doesn't get his shield either. But hey, I mean Shockwave for half a health bar with a minute left, and he's got a red buff. He's gonna regen no problem. Shouldn't be a shouldn't be an issue for Dardock to be ready for this dragon fight. Yeah, we'll see if Ryoma has his ulti in time. I assume he will since it is rank two. It seems to be cooling down fairly quickly there. Yeah. As they will just drop the Herald mid. Interesting to see that they actually drop it now. I'm not sure if it would have lasted in, until the next dragon did spawn, but you know, often you see that as the play, but instead they are just going to try to look to push now. You can see, though, that 100 Thieves are moving for a potential flank. Nar is coming down from top. 
Hecarim is on the side, so Dignitas kind of cheating down towards bot lane, knowing the potential of a, an engage from that top side. Ooh, the hook's gonna land on a full mini Nars. Decent damage on a Sunday, on a half HP. Rend almost knocks him down, but out goes Dardock. He gets Honeyfruit and a shield just in time. But Soli goes on the chase, doesn't quite catch FBI, goes in for close some more. In comes the support squad as well. Afro over the wall, away from Ryoma. Dardock very, very low again. Level 10 Rebuff regen, not that high. Level 11 would be a huge difference. So if you had farmed, you'd be full health right now. But Ocean Drake being started, and the TP comes back in for Sunday. Halfway to Mega Nar, but the bar is cooling back down. So we may not have a good way to transform. 5k on the dragon. Ren stacking up, and Closer has no way into the pit as he's going to be zoned out. But Afro's got to be careful. Burns in the damage. They got to try to burn down the dragon now as well. Shockwave flash away. Not going to Ren just yet. He's going to solo it there on Neo. Cybernetic is going to die. So a dragon for a team fight. When's he going to get the kill? Picks it up, but now the other side is going to be rough. One kill, make it a second, no problem. Make it a third as well. And that means Baron is on the table in 19 seconds. Maybe, just maybe, is a target. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to rush it down since it's not already up by the time they got over there. I think it would be too risky. A fairly costly team fight is his. A lot of lives given there by Dignitas. They were just hard committed to the Dragon. It seemed like they didn't think that they could win the 5v5 because they were missing basically every ult. I think the only one they had available was the Thresh ultimate. So uh, they decided, all right, we're just going straight for the Dragon and everyone tried to bail out after that. Unfortunately, it looked like the Dragon did kind of have a, a little bit of a mini leash and regen a bit yeah, of health reset. there. Uh, so they couldn't actually fully burst it down. Darduk wasn't able to smite it, so they didn't have the smite Ren combo to finish it off earlier. And as a result, 100 Thieves go for the fight. Dignitas go for the Dragon. But now Dignitas are on soul point here. And it is Ocean Soul, which is incredibly powerful. So. They are, are going to have to fight for this every single time Dragon spawns now. 100 Thieves will be under pressure to do so, and Dignitas, if they want, if they see 100 Thieves overcommitting towards that bottom side, could potentially look for a trade of Baron or a trade of Towers to get additional gold into their pockets. Yes, indeed. So, Neo on the Callista ha is on two items. I believe Hurricane was just recently picked up after the recent deaths. We didn't have that for the team fight. We still got a three and a half minute timer anyway, so we expect to see FBI on a full two items. I don't think Neo will be up a legendary by that point in time, so AD carry is going to be close. Mid laner's probably in a similar boat. We're getting cosmic drive through for Soligo, so this is a very high cooldown reduction focused mm -hmm. build. And the fact that um, obviously Leandris is 20, but also the mythic passive is another five ability haste, so he's going to have very, very short cooldowns yep. to ult in constantly and throw out just consistent spells. And even CDR boots, right? He's not going Sork boots. He's not looking for that 100 to 0 opportunity. He's looking to be uh, putting out consistent damage with Leandri's burn, hitting front lines, CCing people up with the charm, being able to you know, push people back. Shield bow procs. That fake got dropped dangerously low and has to kind of run away from Sunday now, who, yeah, with Stride Breaker, get the chase down. Ult comes across, oranges, and it's Sunday getting a solo kill. Tough difference here for 100 Thieves. Really nicely done there by Someday. Dignitas going to try to try to corral Someday here, see if they can take him down. Pinks are going over towards the Baron. I'm not sure if they're going to start this up or not. Now that they see Dardock, they might, but it doesn't look like it. Finds a stun. The W, couple of autos. Someday slowed down as well. Flashes, but Afro moves right here. Hook! Flay him in. He's going to transform, though. He's and Dardock live. can't get the rest of the kill. Someday's still living. Here comes Hecarim. I can't believe he got away with it. <laughs> Oh, Someday my. is just too damn tanky on the Gnar. <laughs> they can't take him down. Dardock doesn't have the damage to do it as a full tank. Volibear himself not able to finish the job there. I wonder if Fake God had stayed under the tower, if that fight would have gone better for him. Uh, his use of the ultimate was also fairly late. It was a yeah. really close fight, but I feel like if you just stay under tower there, maybe he was worried about Hecarim showing up and just getting an easy kill onto him, and that's why he backed off. But one turret shot probably would have made the difference in that 1v1. I agree. Yeah, end of the day, it was, you know, maybe a miscalculation by Fake God. And look, those are the kind of things that matter. I mean, so many times, I mean, some of his clips were him surviving these tower dies before. We can watch mm -hmm. it again. Equal level at the start. Yep, here it is one more time. Someday, really just with the outplay there, he gets the barrel timing, knocks that down, gets the Gnar into the wall. You know, the CC landing applies the healing reduction, the Grievous Wounds as well. And Fake God now just feeling, all right, I got to back it up. You know, I think at that point, even could have just ulted the wave. And if you just use yeah. the ult defensively at that point, you are giving up your ultimate, but there's no way Someday can actually chase through the ultimate with the minions dead. 
to get that kill. So Fake God thought he could just walk it out, thought he could hold onto the ulti. In this case, he could not. So he go behind him, but I think somebody has more than just one member behind him. So yeah, with Mega now, it's going to be easy to survive at all. Still, Trump's going to land decent damage to the start, down to 1500. And yeah, there's nothing else to do. Honestly, he's just too tanky, as you mentioned. Now, Dragon spawns in 43 seconds. Ulti's up on all accounts, except for someday. Tired mm -hmm. at Mininar, gonna recall. Has TP about the time recall ends. And we'll see if Ocean Soul becomes a priority here. One turret for each team right now in this game. It's been slow going for objectives, but we count down the Dragon timer. If Dignitas land the smite, and Dardak has been good at smites this season, that's Ocean Soul. Yeah, and every flash will be available except for some days. So all the playmaking is available here. Callista ulti popped. Oh, they don't get the hook, though. A Flay gets him out shock. Here comes the dive back in. Easy damage on Aphromoo. Gonna try to get away, but he's gonna drop. One for zero, but they will trade back on a closer. Shockwave buys some time, buys some damage. Volibear over the top, but Dardock doesn't have a good fight. Somebody's about to transform. There's the Meganar. There's an easy kill picked up by the Fake God. And a re-engage for Huhim and Seeligo. Has to try to run away as well. Lands at Charmin FBI, though, into the stunt. And nearly the kill, but not enough. But Neo, Neo is not dead. Neo is still untouched. Neo might kill someday if Red's back up, but he can't get the damage. Soligo instead goes down. Where I'm pushing them away, and 100 Thieves win the crucial 24 minute team fight. Look at those health bars, everyone's so damn low. Neo is healing back up. Is he thinking about going in? It won't be able to happen here. Too little, too late. Someday is just being such a monster for 100 Thieves in these fights. Went for the early Thorn Mail here, has the tabbies, some health built up on top, and they're just struggling to deal with the Gnar. You know, getting into Mega, getting in the face of these carries, pushing them back even surviving all that damage coming through from Neo here. And it was a really aggressive opening. I can't say I like the engage because Neo is not there to follow up, right? Even if he actually finds a hook on someone, is Neo then going to flash over the wall to start the fight? Like, it just feels a little bit bizarre that you don't move into the side brush and then go with the ulti uh, because your ADC is still stuck over on the other side. But Dignitas kiting back, doing an admirable job here. Neo stepping back out of the range of that wall up. Bouncing back and forth over the wall, even nails the cube, but just doesn't quite have enough damage to take down someday. And 100 Thieves with a really nice team fight, creating a bunch of space and punishing that failed engage from Afro. And Neo, actually, I don't like he's going for Bloodthirster now. I was watching him just deal 100 damage on a crit to Closer or to uh, someday in that fight. That man really, really, really needs Lord Dominic's regards so he can punch through frontline. I know it's really nice to lifesteal tank on Callista, but that man actually needs to kill the front line faster, and I think that is a, uh, a missed opportunity there for that item. Since he already has some lives to regardless, I think that would have been, uh, it might be a really big uh, deal maker in the next fight, honestly, but FBI gonna knock down the wave and walk out, no problem, has who he nearby. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of multiple lower damage builds, right? You know, you have a, a very high focus on this lifesteal here from the Callista. It's less about the burst here from Saligo. Ari is not exactly the best at killing frontline, so in a relatively low damage there. Uh, perhaps Fake God can pick up some of the slack if he can get a good barrel chain or two on the front line, maybe soften them up. Uh, of course, the idea here is going to be that Neo is going to be so tanky they can stay in the fight and stack up spears and, and kill them off that way, but you still need to rely on that auto attack damage. Looking for Ryoma now. Could be Chase, kiting him away from the team. Shockwave pulls one back. Ryoma is going to stay alive as the Ari drops instead. The rest of the team shows up. A one for one of the mid laners. Ulti going to be landing the fear onto Neo. Now it's time to lifesteal. Fake God's nearby and Closer can't kill him. But here comes the re-engage. FBI is in. 3v3. Volibear onto three. That's on the back lane. QSS flash gets out. Now who he's the front line? But his ult's going to end in a second and he will be shut down shortly. Fake God's shield Neo. just barely drops. Restun comes in and Neo finds the kill. Now it's time for someday and he's going to have the damage and the chase down. 1v1, Dardock's going to run, and they're both going to live. Oh, my God. They cannot deal with someday. These fights so back and forth. Four for four here up on that top side. As what was a fight that did not start out well for Dignitas is evened out through some of the heroics there later in the fight. But someday has just been such a monster. Here they go one more time, Ryoma buying time, avoiding the charm there, landing the shockwave, kiting it out for so long here. Does actually die to the E over the wall, which certainly was a misplay, but in comes Someday, you know, getting the damage out. Uh, as FBI arrives, they try to fully commit towards killing that Callista, or rather the Kaisa, excuse me, but Someday just cannot be dealt with. You know, Neo is moving forward here, trying to take down FBI, and he is able to do so, but 
Someday is so damn strong that he's returning fire this entire time. He has the thorn mail. The healing is cut very, very heavily, and you cannot life steal tank through that man. Okay. Now it gets a lot more interesting. Someday really stepping up today. There you can see 4,200 damage. Yeah, seems good out of the NAR, the primary front line. Great engage, but no shockwave to be found. Complete airball there from Ryoma. That would have been a kill into Neo, almost certainly. He was flashless. End of the day, it's still the turret falling, and well, next dragon spawns in just about a minute's time, and once again, we're gonna see that fight in the bottom river. That's a big mistake, though. You know, that was a flash from Huhi, which is a huge part of their initiation. They commit the flash and they whip the shot wave. Round two, Soligo has to ult away. Charm not gonna get much done. I think Huhi was able to ult it to stay alive. And now, how about the re-engage? Is there enough? Ryoma a little bit alone, but Dardot cannot easily set him up right there. A lantern back to safety, no problem. But this raver belongs to 100 Thieves, and I think Dignitas have to give this one up. They're really struggling to actually get through these corridors. You know, walking through uh, the potential Orianna is incredibly difficult, especially now that he has the blue buff. Looks like they are going to give this one up. They are cheating more towards the top side of the map, potentially going to try to fight for some vision here around the Baron. But all you have to do in these scenarios where you control mid is send one person to solo the dragon, the other four can can cover any potential Baron take, so there's no real opportunity for a trade here uh, for Dig Toss, and it does feel like the game is kind of slowly slipping more and more out of their control. They got the first three Dragons, they are not able to get the last one, and now again, this, this one they can't even contest. All right, there we go. Dragon number two picked up, no problem at all for Hunted Thieves. They are team fighting better, and so much of that is the high performing front line. Someday getting everything done. 10 out of 15 participation, only one death. Beautiful stuff from him. Follow up mostly there. You can see the gold going back and forth and back and forth. And we've seen these teams fight before and we've seen them go back and forth as well. Late game team fighting still a Dignitas special. Flash Flay, team coming in. Closer buying a bit of time, but isn't enough to find the kill. FBI ignited. Ren's not gonna be doing much more than just a bit of damage on Closer and Ryoma. Shockwave not gonna find his target either. Good sidestep by Neo. What about the re-engage though? There is an ulti available for Closer, which means that could be an engage. Someday nearly Megan Army, it's time to run away for Dignitas. Good stuff though, 400 Thieves. That's both the summoners off of Afro. That's the ultimates off of the bot lane. On two members, they're not able to finish off FBI. Ryoma though has gotta step it up with these ultis. It feels like everyone is just whiffing or, or hitting on maybe one frontline target. Uh, struggling to, to really think of any good ulti he's had this game, and it's such a key part of their composition where you have these divers to deliver the ball, and you've got to make sure that you're communicating with Closer, with Someday, with Fuhi to find those high-value shockwaves because it feels like they have outscaled, but you still have to execute at a high level for that to matter. Yes, I absolutely agree with that one. Ultimately, the CC has to land. Otherwise, you're going to get Lifesteal tanked by a Callista, and she's got Last Whisper now, so not too far away from Lord Dominic's. I mean, Whisper is, you know, about a third of the way there in terms of damage potential, so pretty good start. But 100 Thieves, they just seem like they own everything. The Alistair or the Gnar, the Hecarim walks up, you put an Oriana ball in, and Dignitas is like, all right, have a nice day, I understand. The words are yours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to walk through, right? And, and you're relying on finding some sort of a hook, finding some sort of an engage like that. They don't have the same kind of go buttons uh, that we see over on the 100 Thieves side. It's much easier to engage you know, with a Flash Alistar combo or the Hecra multi than it is with a Flash hook. That can be reacted to uh, much more simply. Of course, they can use the Glista to throw in the Thresh and try to find Flay into hook, but 100 Thieves have been doing a good job dealing with those sorts of looks out of Dignitas, and it really is feeling like they have got to find a pick or they cannot win these 5v5s. Someday just straight up tower diving fake god as many Nar and doesn't have a care in the world. Pops his shield bone and goes, yeah, I stacked armor. Your turrets mean nothing to me. Absolutely outstanding. And now look at this. With the GP ulti down, they have started Baron and Dignitas do not know. Hundred thieves in the mid game are getting so much done. The flash into headbutt, into pulverize, stealing. Oh, he's going the for it. Oh, my word. It was so close. Baron picked up by FBI. Dardock nearly had it in the end. Lanterned back to safety. What about the re-engage? A lot of damage on a Neo. Closer knocked up as well, though shut down to the AD carry, but it's gonna be one and two now. 400 Thieves plus the Baron, plus everything they ever wanted. 100 Thieves of the Baron play. Get the crucial moments they need. They'll find that third kill on top. And Someday's still pushing down to this bottom side. They are gonna get so much here. They have minions in all three lanes. 
Easy access with that Baron buff to pick up a tremendous amount of gold here. 100 Thieves have taken full control of this one. It feels like that Baron is probably the straw that broke Camel's back. And it really seems like it right now as the middle inhibitor is going to be dropping the bot one possible as well. They took the turret. Yeah, FBI is staying. That inhib is going to drop. Someday may well get this one as, uh, on top. So double inhib down, Baron buff on. Okay, they won't get bot lane just yet, but still. With inhibitors falling, with Baron buff on, this dragon is practically a freebie. And Dignitas, all they can do is wave clear. I wonder if Dignitas just to say, decide that they've got to try to flip it though. You know, that you just run to the dragon, you pray that you can win this fight. You know, are they going to sit back and, and wait? Because I don't know if it gets better for them, right? They've got to depend on some sort of a pick, or you know, maybe if you can get the steal, you know, you commit Dardock's life to trying to get that steal and you get Ocean Soul, then maybe there's a way you can claw your way back in because it feels like they are just being completely outmatched in the side lanes now with the lead that Someday does have. As soon as the GP ulti was forced in that bottom lane by Someday, Hunter say, all right, let's go to the Baron Pit. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Dardak actually did a great job getting back here to get in, and the Baron went down to 71 health here, I believe it was. Yeah, yep. 71 before it was taken by Akaisa Auto. So very close, Dignitas aside, side. You know what, we gotta fight for this. Unfortunately, combo is available. The ulti is available from Hecarim, and Neo, as he goes in, just gets CC'd up immediately. FBI ults in right on top of him. They burst down that Kalista. And Without Callista available, yep. there's no chance you're ever going to win these fights. And it was a 5v4, if I was correct there, because uh, I guess it was someday just killing Fake God. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, regardless, someday never showed up, and Fake God was dead. So it was very, very good by 100 Thieves. And now as the bottom inhibitor drops, they're actually leaving Dragon up. They're going for maybe just the end game push right now. No one's even going back to solo. They're just going for knocking down the entire base. So double cannon sieging and bot. That turret's down a half HP already. Top's going to be laid bare. No problem for that inhibitor either. Dignitas, when can they find the fight? Red Bull Baron on for 20 seconds still. And Shockwave is huge. That's going to be a Clist ult back out. But careful, Neo can be the target. Afro going to barely, barely stay alive. Now Neo's jumped on. And that's going to be a couple of kills picked up. As barely get back into the fountain. But still 2-0 to zero already. And Dardock left alone in front of the Nexus. Another easy kill for FBI. So they're going to drop as well. Closer trades his life for the mid laner. And a final headbutt pull for set up and knock down the Bud Light Ace. 100 Thieves crushing through at the very end. Dignitas did not stand a chance in the late game team fights. The early game was Dignitas's, but the late game, 100 Thieves reign supreme. Their 5v5 was so much stronger, and so much credit is deserved by Someday, who was the yes. man that got them there. In all of these close fights, it always felt like, who's the last man standing? It's Someday. Being able to survive, being able to get pressure in the side lanes, withstand the early onslaught that Dignitas had put on, he was incredible in this game. Fake God said, if he can stay even, if he can equal Someday in that top lane, the series is theirs. And in game yes. one, Someday was head and shoulders above. Exactly. And and imagine this was a 5-1-5 and five gangplank. Absolutely didn't win that game, right? Like, Fake God was correct. If he had played to Someday's equal, that was a Dignitas win. The only reason that Thieves won, and credit to them because on the roster, was because of how well Someday played. And this is what they wanted when they had this roster built around him, when the other four ex-Golden Gunny members went to join Someday, was all right. We've got an outstanding top laner, you know, has been one of the best in the world before, has gone to Worlds, all that. Let's give him another really good supporting squad. And for the regular season, it wasn't coming together. His, his laning phase stats were him getting CS leads, but overextending and dying. His team fight stats, it was not coming together. You watch his Cloud9 games were like, you know, just from the, the series last weekend where he would get a lead on Aatrox and then team fights just kind of walked to people and nothing happened. But today he was on point. The NAR plays were there. He had the 1v1 absolute kingdom. Sure, there were some ganks, but an absolute kingdom against Fake God and the team fights, it kept going. So beautiful work by Someday. Good job by 100 Thieves to kind of rally around that and make the team fights happen in time, despite being down against Soul Point. And now we'll see if they can do that even more. It's a best of five. There's a lot more game to play. There is, and we have to see what the adjustments are going to be. And that's kind of the, the excitement, the beauty of playoffs is that 
it's not done after one game. You get to see the adjustments game over game. What will be the different look here for Ding Toss? What are they identifying as the issues that they had? You know, the Ari, I've got to say, didn't feel like it really got any value. Uh, the Volley, to me, didn't really feel like it got a tremendous amount of value either. You know, if you cannot pressure early with this champion, it is just so far inferior to the, to the Hecarim. What we saw actually, you know, from the value that they got, it's such an easy champion to have a really big effect on in that yeah. 5v5. So, you know, those are the two picks from me that really felt like they kind of fell short a little bit. Uh, but whether they identify that as an execution problem or a champion problem, a build problem, remains to be yeah. seen. It felt like Dick and Toss were trying to find a way to focus bot lane, right? Ari yep. shoves and gets out of there. Gangplank just pops the ulti, like, regardless. And Vully turns off the tower for your Kalista Thresh duo lane. Like, all five champs are good at diving bot, and it they got a lead, but it wasn't enough, right? Everything else went the way of, of Hunter Thieves, at least well enough to win the game. So we'll see what it looks like in game two. It's the best part about it. Best of five is you're going to have a lot more games. You get to see more looks from both teams, and we get to see more strategies. Now, Hunter Thieves are on the board one and zero, and it's time for us to step away. But this year from Analysis, we're breaking down that win when we return. So we'll see you there. Jake from State Farm. I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. With the oak and the eagle as witness, consider a square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. You want the real deal? Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Dreams aren't achieved overnight. They take passion. It's Mr. World, right? Dedication. And even then, there are no guarantees. But for the LCS, that's the power of dreams. Too bad! It means you never give up. It means you always play again. Honda, proud automotive partner of the LCS.
Welcome back to the Midseason Showdown and the State Farm Analyst Desk, where 100 Thieves have taken victory in game one of our best of five series, now standing at one to zero. Crumbs, I'm coming to you first because we had a lot of questions about how draft would break down in the series, considering the fact that Dignitas could throw so many curveballs. What would the prep look like for 100 Thieves? How do you feel they did? Because we got one of those Dardot curveballs in the Volley Bear right off the bat. They did excellently with this draft. They got ridiculous power picks. Oriana Hecarim with the Alistar combo, a side lane with Nar for someday. This was a 100 Thieves team that knew it would come down to team fights, had a significantly superior team fight composition. And Dignitas, for some reason, not only did they not have a stronger team fighting composition, there was no interest in side lanes or picks. It was all about let's just hope we win bottom lane and survive through that because taking the gangplank into the Nar later. That is not going to win you the sidelines as we saw how quickly some they dispatched the fake god. I can see the 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 idea in the comp though. I like if you know it's going to be pretty heavily focused on dragon stacking and maintaining the vision you have on objectives. So I just saw you know Dignitas wanting to constantly be on the objective which they were doing and make it hard for 100 thieves if they're fighting into their vision to deal with the pick they have the charm thresh hook. Uh, Callista engage. They literally have everything to make it so if they're maintaining their vision properly, that they should have soul. So I, I think from that standpoint, it's it's it makes sense. It's just a difficult comp if they fall behind. Yeah, and I think it works well into 100 Thieves as well because we talked about how important the bot lane is for 100 Thieves. And so there's really not much that's going to contest Callista Thresh early uh, unless you're really well, willing to step outside the meta a little bit. And we saw the, the benefits of that for Dignitas right out the gate. They were able to actually pressure and get a kill on the bot lane of, of 100 Thieves. You know, 100 Thieves go for a recall. This is going to prompt uh, the bot lane for Dignitas to push out because they don't want to have, you know, uh, the Kaisa coming back with a, with an item up. So they start shoving it out. Who he decides, I'm not actually going to recall because I don't really get, can't get anything that nice. I'm gonna actually going to catch this wave because he expects, you know, the bot lane for Dignitas to do the same thing and recall themselves. But uh, it's actually just a really smart play by Afro sneaking into the brush. Who he not seeing it, they see him use his, his ability and they cancel their recalls and they're able to land a hook on him here to actually set up their own kill. And so this was just a really smart play out of the bot lane for Dignitas and it's directly countering what it, you're expecting to be one of the strengths for 100 Thieves over the course of the series. Yeah, I mean, here's yeah, the follow-up. It's so important for them. Yeah, because this is the follow-up, right? Because the fact that they're able to get that advantage through bot lane can come mid now on six and be able to make this play happen mid lane and get the dragon. Because one of the consequences, if they do not kill Alistar and if they let him freeze the wave with an item advantage, if, you know, Afro and uh, Neo base, then that's actually a free dragon for 100 Thieves. That's the, that's the dragon setup. If they stay, item advantage and a timer for Hecarim to gank. So the fact they're able to make that play on the slim timer that they did was insanely good from Dignitas. I mean, it's a hot, hot start there. Two kills early on for Dignitas. But Raz, this is where I want to come back to because we have to talk about how 100 Thieves set themselves up for those later stages of the game. And of course, it comes from yeah. none other than Sunday in the top lane. Yeah, because you know what? This time around, 100 Thieves got Rift Herald. And on a stacking wave, they finally gank and give resources to Sunday. And then while this is all happening, by the way, mid lane, they set an ambush for Afro move. So when he comes in for a play, all through control wards. So he's just confused how they even saw him doing this. This is a great prediction from who he to be able to get the setup and a kill on Afro move. Like, uh, yeah, on the kill on Afro move. So two plays that I thought were really smart because not only in the first replay, they get full turret, pl turret plays, Herald on top lane, First turret gold on a Sunday, so he's far ahead. Now you have the play and set up on Afro Moose, so now 100 Thieves are just basically thriving on the map. That really gave me the feeling that Dignitas in those two plays didn't think about what 100 Thieves could do. They thought that they were, maybe would just continue to farm and not look for other plays. Maybe they thought the bottom lane was there, but you constantly have to respect the fact that the enemy is trying to answer your plays. They've watched your VODs. They know what you're up to as well. And so then when it comes to the mid-game team fights, you have a Dignitas that's a little bit behind. They haven't really snowballed as quickly as they should have. So they're trying to take these team fights with a suboptimal way to to start the fight so we can roll the replay and actually show how they start a team fight with 
the fates call. This hold has up. a sound cue. Hold up, hold up, hold up. That's the next one. That's the next one in the game. You're getting ahead of ourselves yeah, here. Hold I'm up. giving this one to Mark. I, it was a hype. You gonna it's... skip this team fight? Yeah, you can't skip this hypey ass team fight. Let's go, Mark. Let's break it down. Not, uh, not that there's much to break down. <laughs> I mean. No, I mean, I just love the aggression. I mean, the only play I can really criticize here on an individual level was who he's direct line flash, or excuse me, FBI's that still let him get hit by the Fates call. But other than that, I actually thought the way most people played this was was quite good. And especially like the flash there by Afro to get out of the minion uh, and the next call up Q. Like, I was really excited to see this level of execution coming out from, from the, the, the team. And not just that, but they were willing to have a five-man bot lane party 13 minutes into the game and showing that both teams are willing to actually 5v5 and, and t test their hands in a sense. Yes, and honestly, this says a lot of great things for the upcoming series. The fact that not only are you seeing game one, that Dignitas is building plans based off of a composition they recognize is like really heavily based on their early game. So that means Dignitas, sure they have the two veterans, rookies on that team as well, you're saying, you know what? We have the ownership that we need to be making plays early, and we know that 100 Thieves is bot lane as well, so we have a, sl a small window. But set up the gank with the Thresh, the Callista ultimate. If we keep continue to see this, I think we're going to have a, a banger of a series. I mean, it's back and forth fights, neck and neck the entire way, and I think this is where we come back to Crumbs, the idea that Dignitas maybe felt like they were on a bit of a clock, started to get too creative with their engages. They see that Nar is not here, and so they think, all right, we can go for this, but there's no longer any vision on the pixel brush, and this engage, nobody can realistically follow this up. As long as 100 Thieves kite back, it's going to be a lot easier. Now, Closer does overstep here, and the fight ends up being significantly close, but I think that had they been more patient with this and just made sure that they can engage with the hook into the Fates call, Watch then Neo. this fight would have been a lot closer, because you see Neo, right? Look at him. He's sidestepping. They're so low. If just Woo. a little bit more would have gone their way on this fight, I think Dignitas would have had a much better time. Yeah, and then of course, 100 Thieves being able to rush through this uh, uh, Baron. It was pretty close though, just to being able to see the fact that Dardog gets into the pit, so just puts it to a smite fight. At the end, it is 100 Thieves that take it, and because Dardog put himself in this position so they can get a steal, it's going to be an easy one fight for 100 Thieves. But for me, just even looking back at the previous fight, because that one intrigued me. Yeah, it, like it's one of those risky yeah. plays. The fact that if you if Thresh gets the hook, we're singing his praises, right? But my con my issue is the fact that they're taking that risk to begin with. I think 100 uh, Dignitas came back with some good spikes, like Callista had Renan's shield bow, Essence Reaver shield bow on the GP. They should be more comfortable playing that fight out because they had good positioning there as well. So I don't think you need to be. Uh, Feeling desperate, I don't think they were necessarily feeling desperate, but like taking more risks than are necessary with your comp. Yeah, I definitely agree. They could have just uh, tried to finish the Drake stacking and force the enemy team to walk into you. All those pick tools that you have. I don't know why Ari didn't go Everfrost and instead opted for the more team fight oriented build uh, with the Leandries. Um, but after they flubbed that, it was scaling advantage 100% on the side of, uh, of 100 Thieves and someday slammed in the silence. He had pressure on Fake God over and over again, threatening solo kills, converting some of them. And that's what set up the Baron was the fact that he was putting so much pressure on that the GP had to blow his ult defensively. Um, and so I thought someday was a huge problem in this game and could easily continue to be for the rest of the series. All right, Crumbs, you're my Dignitas man when it comes to the predictions. So let's talk about the changes here for game two. Sticking to red side. They get the counter pick. We've already seen one unique champion out of Dardoch today. What comes next? I understand that they're eager to take the Thresh and Callista. It had been banned in the regular season away from Neo, but you cannot be giving away these power combinations of Hecarim, Oriana, Oriana, Alistar. So I need to see them take a little bit away from the team fight power hours that 100 Thieves is going for, snatch that for themselves, give themselves a better opportunity to compete in these team fights and not over rely on taking advantages in the laning phase, which has never been their strength all season long. All right, well, 100 Thieves was the team to pull out the first victory of the series. And after a rough game one for Dignitas, a little comfort food might be in order. Now, Grubhub delivered them their own taste of home to tuck into. Let's take a look. After the weekend matches are all over, it's just important for the team to be able to chill, relax, vibe, eat good food. Most important part. 
win or lose, there's a lot to talk about. Spending that time right after lets everybody unwind. You have to finish the burger, the fries, and the drink. No, you can do it. No. I've seen you eat mine. No, I don't eat that much. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, someone pays you a million dollars, would you do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good to separate from playing the game all the time. It's where everybody's gathered, you know, talking, having a good time. And easy to bond over good food and just talk about whatever, you know.